as you guys probably know, Void Strap is discontinued. Yeah, it hasn't been working for like three months now. But if you read this screen right here, Plexity. Yes, yes, yes. We're talking the most powerful Robux launcher and optimizer for 2025 and 2026 when it's here. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you the best Plexity settings. It's going to fix your lag, fix low FPS, and fix high ping. And honestly, this thing is incredible. And no, I'm not sponsored. I wish I was. Whoever owns Plexity, please pay me. All right, jumping straight into this. We're going to download Plexity. Now, I'm going to put a link down below. I always get it off GitHub. This thing is kind of like a work in progress. So it's going to keep updating. And I find the latest versions always pop up here first. All you need to do is underneath releases right here, click this, go to Plexity.exe. I'll try and put the direct link down below. So it's really easy to download. Once it's downloaded, you want to open it here. Just press download now. You may get this pop up to install .NET to run this application. I'm pretty sure I already have this. Just uh, press download now. There's a chance it'll open this browser for you. You just want to press click here to download manually. Once it's loaded, literally two seconds, just run that, press install. And now we're good to go. Reopen Plexity. Don't worry about any of the other stuff in here other than Roblox priority. I always set this to above normal. Let's continue. And here we go. We are good to go. Now, these, for the most part, honestly, do not worry about these too much. I'm going to make a separate video on them. But downloading too much mods and all these random fast flags off the jump can do more harm than good. We're going to go through everything individually. And I already have the best fast flags for you. Probably the best on the internet, actually. And there's two, depending on what kind of games you play and also what system you have. So stick around for that. We're going to go to deploy. Before we go any further, how many of you have had awful internet lately. I don't know, maybe something to do with the change of season, you know, worsening weather, or just something to do with everyone being indoors right now. It doesn't help that game servers are super unreliable, but thankfully, I gave Exalag a try and it immediately solved my issue. Exalag is the best software for reducing ping and latency, which works by putting you on the closest sub server to ensure you are connected as close to the action as possible. Best thing is that it's free and works for every game with 1,200 servers across five continents. It's also super easy to set up and use. Just head over to the link in the description and click download. And to prove how legit this is, I'm going to download it here again with you. Super, super simple. Just press next, 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 install. Within literal seconds, we're ready to go. I need to find my game. I'm going to choose our region. It's going to do this automatically for us. And then it's going to analyze the routes and put us on the best route. Just like that. Now it's found them. We're going to press apply routes. And it's been applied successfully. That's it. We're done. Good to go. Lower ping. There's even a network analyzer. This is actually news to me. I'm going to run it here. This is basically going to check generally if I have any internet issues. And if there's anything I can improve outside of the game. All right, cool. Everything is looking good. And probably one of my favorite things this software has on top of the ping stuff is you can actually optimize your entire system. Yeah, they have one click system tweaks. This right here, reduce simple lag. Bang. Maximize performance of games. Bang. Keep all my CPU cores active to ensure maximum performance. Bang! I can even clean up my RAM here to get rid of unnecessary memory. So what are you waiting for? If you want a real and powerful game changer to reduce lagging games, honestly, it would be silly not to. Head over to my link down below. It's completely free to get started, but if you never want choppy gameplay again, exclusively for you guys, you, you can lock in a year of exit lag for less than the cost of a literal happy meal per month. So go ahead, use my link at the top of the description and enter code FETCH for an additional 50% off, exclusive to this video only. Some of this is quality of life, but cleaning Roblox 10 files? Definitely not. This is not quality of life. This is going to help. Kind of just frees up some storage on your PC, which can in turn help FPS. Clear your Roblox log. That is also good. Disable CPU zero. Now, if you have eight, I know to say nine here, but if you have eight or nine or more cores, you'll want to have this on. If not, don't worry about it too much. The way you can check this actually, just go into your task manager. In here, go performance, click on CPU, and you want to look for logical processors. Now, right here, I have eight logical processors. So based on my testing, I'll be better to have this turned on. Now, if you have less than eight, do not turn it on. Don't do it. Limit CPU affinity. If you're not using a laptop or a really terrible office PC, you'd be better having this on. And as you can see right here, it'll tell you if your CPU is stronger than your GPU, this is only then recommended. So to give you an example, if you have a GTX or whatever, right? So relatively low in today, if you're not on RTX regarding, you know, GeForce NVIDIA, but you actually have like an i7-12900K, if that even exists, or like a i9-14900K, then yeah, you're good. Turn this on. Any otherwise, again, office, PC, laptop, get it off. But should be good for like 50% of you on this video. Um, Disable Roblox Crash Handler. I have this one on. It just kind of sends like a report, you know, diagnostics back to Roblox if your game crashes. We don't want to help them. So yeah, it's going to run in the background. It's an extra service. It's someone your CPU has to manage. Takes a memory. Don't want it. You don't want it. Turn this on. It will disable it. Restart Explorer. Yes, this is also good. It's going to clear up some memory before you launch your game. These things are all very, very much helpful. They're not going to make the world of a difference. You know, maybe it's like... 
20, 30 frames. But then 20, 30 frames, you know, they really add up. Once you've done this, press save. Now moving down into the mods category. Again, based on what I told you at the start, don't worry about the mods too much. I'll make a separate video on them. These presets right here, most of these are quality of life. It will bring back some of the old character sounds. So you get some nostalgia. These here are not going to affect your performance. The only thing that could have an impact and no one really mentions this, and I actually, you know, I haven't heard anyone mention this, extra sounds. Adding these and installing new sounds to your game. Yeah, your GPU and sound drivers have to work for this. So yeah, don't do it. Same goes for some of these like additional cursor things and adding custom fonts just there's no need now moving down to editor these are going to be where we manage our fast lags but i already have the best fast lags we don't need to do that here now i'm going to make a whole video explaining these but just for the sake of this video very simply you want to join my discord server you can leave afterwards i don't care about getting more members here you want to download these you're going to get this folder here called roblox settings and there's two options one for rivals players and one for all other games so if you play any game other than rivals now i only do this because the rival settings strip your game in a whole lot more and this can cause things like missing textures on most other games so yeah these are only only good for rivals most of you will want this one right here you want to right click the client app settings these are the custom fast flags you want to go to your client settings folder this is a shortcut but it probably won't work for you i just realized that my directory will be different but you want to find your roblox folder and the way you can do that is if you go into your c drive it'll most likely be in your c drive in either program folders or program files x86 or maybe it's actually just in the c drive generally you're going to find a roblox file in here go to versions click the top one it should be the only version file folder here this will be the latest version of roblox client settings and right here you're going to right click paste and press replace the file in destination and now we've done that now we've got some base fast flag settings but we can actually change them a little more if you come down here to f flags or fast flags and we allow Pelexity to manage our fast lags, turn us on. We can go through and kind of customize everything individually. There's quite a bit here. I've made so many videos now, I'm gonna speed run through this. Preferred graphics card, you wanna set your graphics card. Force logical processors, if you have a low end to mid tier PC, have this turned automatic. And if you have a high end PC, you can set this to one actually. Now you can set this to one, I recommend trying it out, but if you can't be bothered, I mean, it really could help. So you should do it, but if you really, if you're lazy, just put on automatic. And I only say that because it can be different for every system. Um, I don't know exactly what CPU you have. Set target refresh rate. You want to have this on your refresh rate. Don't go and if it lets you go above, for example, you're on like 75 or 60 hertz and it's letting you push above that, don't. It's going to cause more bad than good. So have it on your exact refresh rate. And if you have 60 hertz and you don't have the 60 hertz option, just go with automatic. Now avoid task schedule sleep. Turn that on. Hyper threading. This is similar to the other setting I showed you in the deploy option. If you have eight, nine or more CPU cores, again, we can check that by going into our task manager on windows just task manager right here cpu if your logical processes is eight or more than that you want to turn this one on and if not keep it off rendering graphics underneath basic graphics right here disable train textures this you may oscillate between but i usually keep this on remove grass i usually keep that one on gray avatars i keep that one on again we're here for the best performance not the best looking game but i will try and implement some balance here screen space ambient occlusion it's best to have this on the lowest option because automatic may put you to eight and it's going to affect performance anti-aliasing quality again lowest is better but if you think this looks too too awful i wouldn't go anywhere above four if you have a mid-tier pc and if you have a low end don't go above two texture quality this basically depends on your system i actually run this on low and i have a pretty beefy pc but it's quite simple you have a laptop or an office pc something really really bad go lowest mid-tier pc i again i would probably go low high end to mid-tier you could go medium you know high end definitely you could go medium minimal rendering turn that one on frame rate limit now if you have a really good pc set it to a thousand if you have a mid-tier pc you can go to 500 and if that's causing you issues you may want to drop to 240 and if now if you have a pretty low end pc i want to go above 165 and again garbage i mean talking laptop awful you know android level pc set this to zero just go with zero rendering mode i'm not going to dive too much into this keep it on default rendering distance mid tier pc i'd go four high end i'd go uh eight to ten i wouldn't go above that and for low end the automatic option is pretty good but you may want to actually go to like three two maybe even one it's not going to look good honestly but it depends how much you're struggling automatic is pretty good i usually wouldn't say that about most of these automatic settings they're pretty trash but this does a relatively good job especially if you follow everything else i've shown you now disable anisotropic filtering definitely turn that one off lower avatar textures you just don't need to see them in high quality turn that one on there's just skipping keep on no skip this can cause a lot of issues the number resolution set this to 1080p i don't care if your monitor goes higher than that 1080p will be the best for you and if you're on a laptop again low end low end low end go to 720 don't go any lower than that it's gonna look garbage 
Privacy, I turn on the Roblox Telemetry, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I don't really mess with this one. Voice chat, if you don't use it, disable that. Analytics, turn that one off. Tencent, turn that on. And VNG, turn that one on. So make sure they are being blocked. Miscellaneous, things like unlimited zoom distance, this will affect your performance, so don't mess with that too much. Fast rendering, turn that one on if you have a mid-tier PC. Low end, don't worry about it too much because you will probably just run into issues. And as you can see, even if you have a decent PC and you're putting this one on, it can cause lag at first. So don't be shocked if you experience some stutters for the first time you're using this. Game cache, turn that one on. Memory probing, turn that one on. CPU and light calling, turn that one on. Low poly meshes on. Fine grain calling on. Disable layered clothing. If you're really struggling for frames, turn that one on. Now moving down, advanced settings. All of these you want off. All of them off. Basic light settings. I almost missed this. Basic lighting. Post processing effects. Disable bloom. Disable shadows. And force gray sky. These are going to be the best. If you have a mid-tier PC, um, quality of life, you can probably have this one off. But again, better performance with it on. Rendering and graphics. Light data structure on. LUA menu performance improvements. They missed an E here. Plexity, if you're watching this, you need to fix that. But yeah, turn that one on. Garbage collection on. Physics based rendering. This is a bit of a coin flip. Turn that one off for the most part. Just don't worry about it. Improve resource rendering on. And that is pretty much everything. I guess underneath animation settings, the same thing animations is going to help. But it may ruin your experience on the game and it's not as absolutely necessary. But, you know, it will help maybe a few FPS. Same goes for active player animations and other players' animations. And we're pretty much good here. You want to press save? Moving down now to plugins. When you install Plexity, I've noticed some of these just come installed. I recommend getting rid of playtime info. Robux server info is not really necessary. Auto clicker, get rid of that. The test window, get rid of that. And you can keep these two, uninstall Roblox and temporary file cleaner, because these can only really benefit you if you actually use them. Oh, and last but not least, um, settings right here. I forget this exists. Uh, hardware acceleration. I turn this one off. It's going to make you restart your Plexity. No worries at all. We're pretty much done here. And all that's left is to save it one more time, make sure everything is fully saved. It should have been. And just press install. Now, this is going to install Plexity could have done this at the start it doesn't really make a difference but now with all our settings that we've configured and this honestly shouldn't take more than like two minutes and you're ready you're good to go it's going to launch your game here and now all that's left to do is to drop a like and subscribe